The legalization of cannabis in our country is new, ever-changing, and complicated to navigate. Not only do the laws change from state to state, but federal regulations are not currently in line with many state laws. Hi, I'm Gia from FineLaw.com, and today we're talking about all things cannabis and the new laws that surround it. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. Which states allow recreational cannabis use, and are there any restrictions in these states? Generally speaking, most states with recreational pot laws require it to be consumed on private property and out of public site. Smoking a joint on a public sidewalk, for instance, may be charged as an infraction or misdemeanor, similar to open container laws. Additionally, stone driving is just another form of impaired driving, although states differ in how it's tested. Because cannabis laws change from state to state, it would take too long to go through them all. Look for a link in the description below for a detailed overview of all 50 states and the different laws concerning recreational use of cannabis. Even in states where it is legal, isn't it still prohibited by federal law? And what does this mean? Although cannabis is still technically prohibited under federal law, the DEA has mostly curtailed its efforts to go after individuals or cannabis providers in those states where it is now legal. Instead, federal law enforcement is focusing their efforts on pursuing those who operate outside the law entirely, such as drug traffickers. However, it is still within their legal capacity to enforce federal marijuana laws in all states. Wherever federal jurisdiction applies, federal law takes precedent over state law. So, if you're camping at Yosemite National Park in California, a legal state, you're actually within federal jurisdiction and state law will not protect you. Legal growing, selling, or possession of marijuana in an otherwise legal state also can open you up to federal enforcement of drug laws because the federal government still has the authority over anyone for violating federal law, which still lists cannabis as a Schedule I drug. So, technically they can act on it, but are choosing not to. In addition, cannabis businesses still must pay federal income taxes, but aren't eligible for the types of tax deductions and benefits available to non-cannabis businesses. The IRS Tax Code 280E that applies to marijuana businesses expressly forbids deductions on taxes for income derived from trafficking of Schedule I or Schedule II substances. What are the restrictions on flying with cannabis? And what if I'm flying from one legal state to another or within one state? This is where things can get messy. Since the TSA, a federal agency, has no arresting authority, and thus turns over any found cannabis to local and or state authorities, policies tend to vary. Airports in Los Angeles, Seattle, Tacoma, and Portland, Oregon do allow passengers to fly with legally acquired marijuana as long as it's under the legal limit and either within the state or to another legal state. However, airports in Denver and Las Vegas, both located in legal states, prohibit the possession of cannabis on airport property. Bottom line, it is important to remember that each state is different, and in some cases, airports within one state may all have different policies according to local ordinances. Check with your local airport to understand the regulations that affect that particular site. And despite Canada's nationwide legalization of cannabis, you cannot fly with it across international lines either to or from Canada, and not even to a U.S. state where it's legal. And keep in mind, unlike the TSA, U.S. Customs and Border Protection do have arresting authority and will enforce federal law if you're caught with cannabis during a customs inspection. My state has decriminalized cannabis possession. What does this mean, and how does it differ from legalization? Unlike legalization, where cannabis may be legally manufactured, sold, and consumed, decriminalization means that simple possession is not punished as a felony or serious misdemeanor. For example, cannabis remains illegal in Minnesota, but anyone caught possessing less than 42.5 grams is charged only with a petty misdemeanor, with a maximum fine of $200 and possible drug education program. 
In most states that have decriminalized marijuana, the penalty for simple possession is not unlike a traffic ticket. Some states that have decriminalized pot still do impose short jail sentences for possession. It's all relative, as those states typically had very severe penalties prior to decriminalization. It's also important to note that in states that have decriminalized cannabis, penalties for cultivation and distribution, or possession with intent to sell, haven't changed much, if at all. I live in a state that has legalized recreational use. Can I be denied a job or terminated for testing positive in a drug screening? This is a still developing area of the law. But for the most part, employers are free to either rescind a job offer or fire you for off-duty marijuana use. This depends on the state and whether cannabis use is for medical or purely recreational purposes. A handful of states, including Minnesota, Delaware, and Arizona, have statutes protecting medical marijuana patients with valid doctor's recommendations from adverse employment actions. Colorado, on the other hand, has no such protections, despite allowing recreational cannabis use. In fact, the state Supreme Court held that an employer acted within the law when it fired a quadriplegic employee who used medical cannabis lawfully while off duty. He failed a drug screening and was fired and sued the employer for wrongful termination. Also, employers concerned about workplace safety, like construction and aviation, generally aren't required to make accommodations for even off-duty cannabis use, regardless of state laws. Well, there you have it. A crash course on the new legal world surrounding cannabis. Keep in mind, this is a huge topic and there is a lot to keep up with, but you can stay up to date with FineLaw.com. I'm Gia and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to dig a little deeper, visit finelaw.com for our articles, blogs, and our weekly podcasts.